Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. I hope that everybody is doing well. I hope that if you celebrate Thanksgiving, it was a nice time with your family. I hope you had great food to eat. So for today's video, it's going to be a quick discussion on using oral glucocorticoids with our patients. Its anti-inflammatory properties make it a very widely used drug class and it's used for a variety of symptoms and diagnoses. Like I said, there's a wide variety of diseases that it treats, including allergic, hematologic, dermatologic, neoplastic, rheumatic, autoimmune diseases, diseases of the nervous system, renal, and respiratory diseases. That is a ton. So clearly it's a very useful drug class. There are general recommended dosing guidelines. However, the idea is to try and individualize dosing per patient, and it's based on both diagnosis and the patient's health history. The overarching theme is to administer the lowest effective dose for the shortest duration possible. So that right there should tell you that this drug class, though it is very beneficial, it also comes with risks as well. And so today we'll make sure to discuss both the benefits and risks in using the oral glucocorticoids. This chart here is from up to date and it offers some general guidelines when prescribing glucocorticoid therapy. So we'll read through these. It starts off with initiate only if there's a published evidence of objective therapeutic benefit. So is this backed by science? Has research shown it to be beneficial when using steroids with whatever diagnosis this patient has? These are the questions that we need to be asking ourselves before prescribing steroids. Next reads, use only after other specific therapies fail. For example, with patients who have resistant poison ivy with severe dermatitis, a tapered steroid dose pack can be used. There are no well-designed studies that examine the exact therapeutic dose of steroid needed. However, extensive clinical experience suggests that rebound dermatitis can occur if too short of a steroid course is used. For example, the six-day Medrol dose pack has shown to be inefficient in treating this resistant poison ivy. So next says, identify a specific therapeutic objective. What is the steroid going to fix? What results are you looking for? Next, administer sufficient glucocorticoid for a sufficient time to achieve the desired response. Next up, administer glucocorticoid for no longer than is necessary to achieve this desired response. And finally, terminate if the objective therapeutic benefit is not observed if complications arise, or if a maximum benefit has been achieved. So here is an example of typical dosing with oral prednisone. Generally, 10 to 60 milligrams of prednisone are given in a day, either in a single dose, or it can be divided into two, three, or even four doses. A low daily dose of prednisone is defined as 2.5 to 10 mg a day. And a high daily dose of prednisone is based on weight and it is considered 1 to 1.5 mg per kg a day, with typically a maximum dosage of 80 to 100 mg of prednisone in a single day. And then an example of a prednisone uh, tapered dose pack is listed here for you. So you can see on day one, they take 30 mg, 10 at breakfast, 5 at lunch, 5 at dinner, and 10 at bedtime. And then it's through six days, and you can see how the dose is slowly tapered. All right, so let's talk about some specific indications for using prednisone. There are a few examples listed here, and you can go ahead and read over those. I am only going to briefly discuss asthma exacerbations, COPD exacerbations, and then urticaria, as I feel this is what you will see most often in the outpatient setting. And that's totally anecdotal, but this is what I see most often, so it's what I'm going to discuss with you guys. So for adult patients with moderate to severe asthma exacerbations, or for those who do not improve promptly and completely using that short-acting short beta agonist, then oral prednisone is indicated. Uh, the general dosing for this is 40 to 60 milligrams by mouth per day for three to 10 days. And it's administered in either one or two divided doses. In those patients who are having a severe, however not life-threatening COPD exacerbation, Oral prednisone, again, is indicated, and a typical dosing for this is going to be 40 to 60 milligrams one time a day for 5 to 14 days. 
And remember that the cardinal symptoms for a COPD exacerbation are increased dyspnea, increased sputum volume, and then increase in sputum purulence. And then finally, for moderate to severe urticaria, prednisone may be indicated. It's recommended that we reserve steroids for those patients who do not first respond and improve with antihistamines. Of course, also if there are signs of angioedema or if anaphylaxis is a concern, then absolutely epinephrine is required. So for the recommended dosing for prednisone for the urticaria resistant to antihistamines, 20 to 40 milligrams of prednisone daily can be divided either into one or two doses a day, generally for three to four days. Short bursts of prednisone are also indicated for pediatric patients with asthma exacerbations as well. As you can see here, the length of treatment is generally five days. And with children that are younger than 12 years old, the dosing is weight-based. However, the maximum daily dose of prednisone is 60 milligrams, and that should be observed for both groups, younger than 12 and older than 12 years old. All right, so now we are going to change it up and discuss using dexamethasone. As I mentioned, evidence suggesting optimal dosing and duration of treatment with glucocorticoids is lacking, so the general rule is to prescribe the lowest effective dose for the shortest duration possible. So for dexamethasone, this can be given orally, IV, or IM, and the typical dose is going to be four to 20 milligrams a day given either in a single dose or in divided doses. This steroid should be tapered gradually if it is used in high doses or if long-term use is indicated. One great use for dexamethasone is with the treatment of croup. The general dosing guidelines for this is a one-time dose of dexamethasone at 0.6 mg per kg with a max dose of 20 mg. Looking at this picture here, it makes sense why such a strong steroid would be so beneficial for these kiddos, as this disease can cause severe, even life-threatening inflammation of the upper airways. All right, so now on to adverse reactions with the glucocorticoids. So obviously there are some, as again, the general theme is the lowest, shortest dose possible. So although reducing inflammation can be very helpful in the treatment of diseases, there is a downside to decreasing the body's immune response. And for example, this can increase the patient's susceptibility to infections. Another possible adverse reaction that we wanna be on the lookout for is that the adrenals may actually become suppressed, which can cause an adrenal crisis, which is a life-threatening emergency. So what this means is that the, the body, it generally makes its own steroid equivalent, which we know as cortisol. The concern is that giving oral glucocorticoids in high doses or for long periods of time, this will eventually suppress the adrenal glands and the body will no longer produce these necessary hormones such as cortisol on its own. So risk factors for experiencing adrenal suppression are listed here. Risk factors include, again, higher doses or long-term use, potency of the glucocorticoid, for example, dexamethasone being the most potent of the corticosteroids, ab abrupt withdrawal, interacting medications, a history of adrenal crisis, certain brain and skull-based tumors, and then combining various routes of steroids, for example, oral, inhaled, and or topical. This slide is an overview of additional potential adverse reactions when using glucocorticoids. Again, there are a variety of risks to consider, but this is generally what medicine is all about, right? Weighing risks and benefits in our treatment plans. It's sort of a cost-risk analysis we do each time we prescribe medications. Different side effects to consider include behavioral, GI, increased glucose levels, risk of osteoporosis, and then ocular side effects. There is a lot of information here for you to read over, with each possible adverse reaction listed here, there are risk factors for these negative side effects provided for you. These individual risk factors are of a course important for you to consider before prescribing steroids. So I'll go ahead and give you a minute to go, go over and read this information. Again though, for fear of redundancy, the higher the dose of steroid, the longer the treatment duration of steroid, 
the more we become concerned with these potential negative side effects. All right, so here is some additional information that may be useful to you when in practice and on your board's exam. What about vaccines while our patients are taking steroids? Here is what the CDC has to say about this matter. So many clinicians consider a dose equivalent to either two milligrams per kilogram or a total of 20 milligrams per day of prednisone for two or more weeks to be sufficient concern for immunosuppression. And in this circumstance where we're concerned for immunosuppression, it's best to wait at least one month after either discontinuing the therapy or reducing the dose before administering a live virus vaccine. In activated vaccines, these can be administered at all to all immunocompromised patients in their usual doses, in their us usual schedules. However, the response to these vaccines, it may be suboptimal. Also important to note that if steroids are needed in patients who are either pregnant or breastfeeding, prednisone is the preferred choice. However, a single dose of dexamethasone is considered to be safe in breastfeeding patients. You can even educate them to consider waiting four hours to breastfeed after taking the steroid if they are concerned. All right, and then this last slide here is a very, I think, useful reference. It's taken from Up to Date. I particularly like that this shows the duration of action when taking a glucocorticoid. So as you can see, for example, dexamethasone, this is the longest lasting on here, with one dose lasting up to 72 hours. And this is why so often we see dexamethasone given as a one-time dose in the outpatient setting. All right, well, I think that is going to be all for today's discussion on using glucocorticoid therapy in the outpatient setting. Obviously, this is not all encompassing and I always encourage you to continue doing your own research when practicing and of course when prescribing any medications. Remember the general theme of prescribing steroids is to assess the risk and benefit and to use the lowest effective dose for the shortest time possible. I hope that you enjoyed today's discussion. I hope it was useful for you in your practice. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. It's a free way to show your support and help me to continue making more videos just like this one. As always, I wish you all nothing but the best. Please don't forget to learn something new every day. And as always, I will talk to you guys soon.